We both came from Flatfields, on the great North Shore of the island. Such beauty and wildness. He was happy to be back from the war in 1946, but by the 1950s, we knew none of us could stay for much longer. The economy was in trouble in Barbados, and Britain was beckoning us. My cousin Frank was already in Britain in 1948. He arrived there in the Windrush. It was him sending me this. All smiling, welcoming faces and promising so much. Come and join us, they said. It was my James said we should do it. He'd go ahead and get settled. I couldn't go as of yet as I was finishing off my nurse training at the General Hospital. And I was also expecting, so... We thought it best for me to deliver our child before I traveled. It was sad seeing him off. Soon I heard from him that he found work as a bus driver. He was doing well, although life there, he said, could be trying. And it was a full year later that I finally set off with James Jr. It was a long voyage, but I was filled with hope. He'd found a place in the same lodging as Frank. Down in Brixton in London. I had the address and number of the bus to get me there. He was due to be working, so I couldn't meet him, but Mrs. Healy was expecting me. And she was lovely by all accounts. When I got there, it seemed strange. Mrs. Healy was quiet and awkward. Maybe this was the prejudices people talked about. Maybe she was okay with my James, but not his wife and child. I was so upset and for the first time, my hopes faltered. Let's have some tea, she suddenly said and disappeared for some time. I sat alone with my thoughts, grasping James to my bosom for a dear life. When she did return, I, I knew even more than before that something seriously was wrong. Mrs. Healy, please tell me what is wrong, I implored her. She gulped. Well, my dear, she suddenly said. I have some terrible news for you. It's your James. She covered her mouth and started to cry. What? What? I cried. Mrs. Healy lowered her head and... I'm afraid he was in a terrible accident in his bus last week. He died. <laughs> Mrs. Healy grasped my wrist and grabbed me as the world started to fall away from me and the chair too. She wrestled with me and, and poor little James as the world came up to meet us. How on earth she managed to protect us both from injury, I shall never know. I sat there while she took James away from me. She wanted to comfort him. As I sat there, she sat on the opposite settee, stepped back, just looking at me as I wept in such sweet agony. Here I was, in a lodging house, in a strange city with my child. In his, in his new world of opportunities and happiness. But without the man I loved. The man who had made all of this possible, who set this up for us all. Sweet agony and abject terror overtook me that day.